In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. It is the Lord took to the disciples and the multitude by a parable. It is a parable of the sower. And a parable, the Lord talked by parables in a lot of times. But a parable means what? A parable is in the Greek, as a Greek word, literally means extended simile, means uh, it is a hidden meaning. Heavenly kingdom like so and so and so and so. Yes? So he hides a heavenly meaning in a natural parable, in a natural thing we see every day. So those who don't believe wouldn't understand. But those who do believe would understand what's behind it. In this parable, yeah, the Lord, after saying it, the disciples didn't understand it. And they asked the Lord what that does mean. And the Lord didn't want to answer them while they were among the multitude. He waited till they were alone. Then he explained the meaning of it which means the Lord wouldn't really talk to you unless you are alone with him, unless you give him a quiet time for his voice to be differentiated between the other voices. When you are calm and he is sure that you are listening, so we all need to listen, to ask, and to be in a quiet time with him so that we can understand what he is saying. The seeds. A sower is who? Who is the sower? The Lord. And who? Uh, what are the seeds? His word. His word. So, a sour came out and started to spread the seeds. But the beautiful thing about it, he never differentiated. He never said, no, this land is like a road. I wouldn't spread my seeds on it. No. He spread the seeds all over every part. He spread the seeds on the road, on the rocky parts of the land, even in thorny parts of the land, and the good land. He never been short of spreading his seeds to every one of us. But these seeds has, have really differentiated between types of hearts. According to what? According to our response. According to our response, our response is 
different between a heart and another heart. And this is what the seeds have done. When the seeds did fall on the uh, road, yes, on the path, there was nothing actually gone into the land. This is a heart of what? Those who do what? What is their response? Their response, they don't listen and they don't understand. So what will happen? The birds will come and pick it up and go. These are the hearts who do not listen. Like sometimes while we are in the liturgy, for example, people are busy of doing what? Playing with the mobile means what? They don't want to listen. They don't want to understand. Or calling someone while they are in the liturgy. They are not absorbing anything. And they are not benefiting. A road means no boundaries, no fences. Nothing is there. Everything goes. Animals go. Cars go. Buses go. Humans go. Goes. Anything go. This is the ones who wouldn't listen, wouldn't understand. The rocky places, they are what? Rocky places means little fertile soil, but the bottom of it is rocky, rockery. And the plants, the seeds go on the land and get some branches up. It start to grow, but because there is no depth, there is no depth, when the sun comes, it weathers so quickly. What is this heart? Superficial heart. Superficial heart. When they listen to the word of God, they enjoy it. They enjoy it. They really like it. But inside them, hardness of heart. The word wouldn't find depth to grow more. Their growth stops. Stop there. These are people who lack what? Lack what? Yani they look from outside, okay. And they look from outside saints. But they are not growing. They stop there at very small plant. And when the sun comes on means the tribulations, the difficult times, they weather. They don't carry on. They have no what? They have no enough water. They, the first one, the road, 
has no water at all. They don't want to listen, they don't want to hear, they, want, they don't want to understand, no water. This one have got little water, enough to make fertile soil for the superficial layer, but not enough to make depth of the roots, to give space to the roots to grow. They lovely, but superficial. The third one, thorny, thorny places. And thorny places here is what? Thorny places means simply they have done what? They had enough, they have water, but not yet as well enough, but they allowed the thorns to grow. And the thorns here are apparent, you can see the thorns. In the rocky one, you only see the green land, the superficial layer. But here, the roots go deep, but mixed, mixed. Thorns come, and when thorns come, no matter what water you give, what water you put in the land, the weeds absorb it. The thorns will take the water of the seeds and the suffocate the seeds. A mixing life between good and bad with no conscious to differentiate or to stop or to escape from evil. We come to the church, we are great worshippers. We leave the church, we live in the world. And there is no problem. And there is no problem. This is thorny soil which suffocate the good plant. the pleasures of the world. There is no problem of night clubs. There is no problem of doing any sin. But there is no problem as well of going to the church and being uh, good worshippers and to have the Holy Communion. No problem. Both can go together. This is thorny soil. The word of God is suffocated. And the last one is a good soil where it produces 30 and 60 and 100 fruits. You notice, you notice that the first three are not fruitful. Neither the root, nor the rocky, nor, nor the thorny one are fruitful. So what the Lord is aiming from our responses? To be fruitful. To be fruitful. If we are not fruitful, then we are not really taking the word of God and giving it the space to grow and to produce fruits. 
And this is our responsibility. The Lord at the end of the days will look for the fruits. Will look for the fruits. Every one of us probably falls into one of these categories. So what category you are in? The road, the rocky one, or the thorny one, or the good land? The good thing, the good news, that these different types of soil can change and integrate between each other. The good land at certain times can be thorny, can be rocky, can be a road, depending on what. What is the secret of keeping your land, your soil, your heart, fruitful. What is the secret? Anybody knows? <coughs> huh? What is the secret? Water. Water. Water is the secret to keep the water in. You know when the Lord uh, wanted to call people for his kingdom, he said, he said what? Believe, first thing, and then get baptized. And what is after baptism? You take the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist came and kept saying, repent, repent. Whoever believed him and re really repented, he said, come and get baptized. And they all came and got baptized, confessing their sins. Confessing their sins here is purifying your heart from the thorns and getting the Holy Spirit to make depth for the seeds and make the whole depths of your heart fertile, responding, and fruitful. When our Lord Jesus Christ got baptized from John the Baptist, we see that the Holy Spirit descended upon him like what? Like a dove like a dove and the Holy Spirit is the mystery of what is the mystery of what huh what is what do we have of the Holy Maron after we been baptized the Holy Spirit fixes us in the tree of life, in the body of Christ. In baptism we take the new nature by the Holy Spirit, which is symbolized by the water, which is a living water, running water, continuous watering and feeding us and fixing us in the body of our Lord Jesus Christ. So the most important thing is to take the seeds, hide it inside you, and keep doing what? Watering it, watering it. When the water is diminished, your good soil start to become thorny. And if it diminishes more, it would be rockery. And if it diminished more and more, it will be like a road. The mystery 
is the water. The mystery how long every day you sit with the Lord. How every day you care about the seeds you get from the Bible. The word of God are the seeds. And where do we get the seeds from? From the Bible. Do we read the Bible every day? Do we make sure that we get enough seeds every day? And enough water to irrigate it and to let them grow in us? <coughs> the seeds are what else in our lives? When we read the Bible every day, when we read the life of saints every day, when we hear uh, anything about God, listening to sermons or coming to attend the church, but what else? What is the seeds? What else? What is, what is more vivid seeds do we have always in our lives? is the Holy Communion, the Holy Communion. Whenever you come to have the Holy Communion, you have united with the Word of God. The Word of God came into your heart, your life. And we come out from the Holy Communion to do what? To care about it, to let it grow, to be fruitful or we stop irrigating it and the word of God starts to have thorns and to be suffocated and the word of God starts to be facing rookery heart and started to weather and give no more fruits. May our Lord Jesus Christ gives us all to... Next one, please. Next one. Next. 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 Mm. Yes. The, no, the one before. No, one after, 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 just to hide the word of God, to water it, to examine ourselves always and purify our lives so that we can be fruitful 30, 60 and 100 and be saved. May the Lord give us all to be whole for him, whole for him, not part of our lives for him, whole. God is a jealous God, wouldn't accept half hearts or three-quarter hearts or even 90% hearts, either 100% or none, all or none, either all your heart for him or none. May the Lord give us all this dedicated life. Glory to God forever. Amen.